What's up, nerds? Um, in today's video, I wanted to go over how, um, just some tips on how you could stop uh, overcomplicating your freelance projects so much like I do. Um, these are some kind of just tips that I've come up with over the years of me freelancing. And so hopefully um, you can learn something out of this and, uh, you know, save a headache or two. So the first one that I wanted to bring up was custom versus premium themes. This one's this, this one's a, a hot potato. Um, there was a th there was a thread back on uh, Reddit just talking about using page builders in general and kind of like, are you a real developer if you've done that or I don't know something something dumb like that. But ultimately, there is a time and place for both of these and. Um, you're going to want to use what's ever best for the job. Just use the right tool for the job. There's no real reason to uh, reinvent the wheel. Um, if there's a premium theme out there that does what your client needs it to do, and they are aware that you are going to be just buying a theme and, and editing it, then I see no problem with that. Um, custom themes, though, are obviously better in a lot of regards. Um, you can do a lot more with them a lot more easily and you can kind of tailor fit them to the project that you're, that you're working on. So, you know, if you needed to do some very specific things, you can just make it do some of those very specific thing, uh, things. Um, and there's not going to be a whole lot of, uh, junk to sift through in the premium theme, but they are out of the box. So premium themes, you pay your 60 bucks or whatever it is, and you get the whole deal and the whole deal. Indeed, you get every, every skeleton in, the, in every closet that that theme gives you. Um, but you know, you get what it gives you. So it's really up to, uh, up to, uh, you to decide whether or not that's worth it. And just kind of using your knowledge of the project. I, it's, it's, I can't really say one way or another, but I almost always default to a custom theme. I rarely use premium themes anymore. That's just not the kind of clientele that I have. Um, but there is a very strong time and place for both of those, uh, for the premium themes. But ultimately it comes down to what are the client's expe expectations for the project? I would know people who would get mad if they thought that they were buying a, uh, a custom theme from somebody and turns out that you bought a theme off theme forest edit it a little bit and uh, just handed it back to them. And they're like, I paid a lot of money for you to just dink around with a $60, $60 theme. But just long term, what is this uh, project going to look like? Because if this is just, you know, a blog that has a contact page, homepage, you know, the, the easy, easy stuff there, then, you know, and as long as the client's aware of it, then premium themes would do just fine. But if it needs to be like kind of a more complicated project, like you're building homes or something like that, and you need to be able to have a lot of different custom post types, and you need to be able to have the data exchange between the custom post types in a, in a good way, or between the, the custom post type and the template in a, in a different way. And I mean, there's, there's definitely going to be um, a leaning more towards the custom theme. So uh, just kind of some things to think about before you decide which way to go. Um, finally, on this piece, the custom versus premium themes, there's going to be a uh, trade-off that you're going to have to have between speed, budget, and scalability. Uh, premium themes are not going to be nearly as scalable as custom themes, in my opinion, just because there's going to be so much dirt you're going to have to sift through somebody else's code that, you know, this theme was me meant to be a premium theme and not really in a lot of way, in a lot of instances, not meant to be edited very much by anybody, but the theme developers that originally made it budget is also going to come in huge because if you charge a normal amount of money, then going the custom route, it's going to take a lot more time to get it to kind of premium theme status where you have the ability to kind of edit the content in a way that makes sense to the client. And then finally speed, uh, custom themes are just going to be almost always more lightweight and easier to uh, make fast. Um, you have 100% control over the SAS and the JavaScript and the, the PHP, the HTML, you have all of that. You can make the queries exactly um, what you need them to be and all that, that kind of stuff. So um, weigh those things in, in your mind before you decide. 
Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is, um, and I think there's the last thing that I want to talk about, but there's a couple bullet points here. Uh, don't over engineer the site. This is the one that I have the biggest problem with is, um, I always prematurely optimize my sites and it's a bad habit because it wastes my time and it, uh, hardly ever, uh, uh, uh what am I trying to say? It hardly ever like act- gets taken advantage of, um, And what I mean by premature optimization is just kind of thinking about like, oh, what if the client eventually needs to do this with the site? Or what if I have to come back in here and do this other thing? And if I don't have like a very good reason to do it other than, you know, I'm I'm just thinking that it could happen. um, You need to know that like this is a realistic possibility that this feature of the site is going to be used for X, Y, and Z. Don't and... So like, if there's no way that you think that this is going to be an e-commerce website, uh, don't install WooCommerce and don't start setting up things that could event or like, you know, uh, drip email campaign features or something like that. Um, there's not going to be, uh, any sort of need for that long term. So don't waste your time and, and energy on those kind of things. And, and that goes to with like, you know, code features themselves. Like if it doesn't make sense to be in this kind of very um, you know, robust class, don't make it a class. If it can just be simplified down, make it simple. And, uh, that's kind of where that kiss, um, I can't remember what they're called, but the, the letters, the K I S S keep it simple, stupid, just something I have to repeat in my head (laughs) when I'm, uh, building out some of these freelance projects. Uh, don't go crazy with new tech unless you're, you've budgeted the time for it and also that the client is cool with it. Like don't throw Gatsby onto a freelance site uh, because they can't install plugins. They can't do all sorts of things if they're, if they don't know that they can't. So uh, I would also don't, you know, don't go crazy with um, deployment stuff. Like I uh, am not going to throw Kubernetes on there in in a very specific Docker container and like, you know, build out the Docker container, get the Kubernetes all set up and get it all up on AWS for, you know, my friend's photography site or something like that. Like it makes no sense to do that. All it is, is just a bunch of overhead that you're going to have to keep track of, and it's not going to benefit you financially for it. So just go easy on the tech, unless you have a very, very uh, specific reason for it. Um, or, you know, this is something you really want to learn and you're totally cool with, uh, you know, keep maintaining all of that new stuff. Um, so that's what I'm trying to say is, uh, is put the extra work in where it makes sense. And the extra work could, is just really just making sure that the site is fast. It's SEO friendly. It does exactly what the client wants it to do functionally. And it looks exactly the way the client needs it to look according to the design. So putting your time and energy where it's actually going to make a difference to the client and puts you in a good spot for the future. Like, um, for example, you're going to want to have probably a nice little build process. So your JavaScript compiles and is minified, um, and concatenate it all together. And then, you know, you've got SAS going. And so you can, you know, just keep have variables and, and, and mixins and all those like fun things that are in SAS. And it compiles it all down, minifies it into one single file that uh, is great for the client because it uh, keeps the speed up and it's great for you because it's uh, minimal work to get set up and you are going to be set up long term for it. Um, On top of that, I would also suggest that you just get a git deploy like you can use something like Buddy. It's free. um, And you can just have it set up so you can, uh, you know, get pushed to a master branch and um, it deploys the site right to where you need it to. No, n- nothing about, you know, you know, syncing folders or anything like that with, you know, transmit or, or FileZilla or anything like that. That's just not the thing that I like to, you know, have in my brain. I'd rather just push to a Git branch and have it go where I want it to go. So those are the kind of areas where um, uh, putting the extra work makes sense in my brain. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, Speaking of uh, Git deploys, I have a couple of Patreon videos 
um, that are exclusive to patrons, one of which is actually using Buddy to deploy a WordPress site using Git. So you push to a branch, it goes to a DigitalOcean droplet. So really fun video. We also go over headless WordPress and Gatsby and things like that. Just a little bit more advanced tutorials for those who are interested. Um, I'd like to thank my patrons for supporting me. Um, I really appreciate you guys. Can't do this without you. Um, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. Um, I do WordPress videos um, and tutorials every single week. So appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one.